Well, I think we found out what the band likes to do. Give it up for them, people. All I know is I am so fired up, I could go spend money on any motorcycle in town tomorrow. I don't have a dime, and I could go buy one, just because. So if any of you want to loan me something, if you need to, like, I don't know, rent my home, I don't care. Doesn't matter. I'm just, I'm that fired up tonight. I need to go buy some kind of really expensive toy. Or I could just ride this one home. Chris would probably appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> how about Chuck Norris jokes tonight, huh? I'm, I'm sure there are more of those to come. How are you? You doing okay? Good, just making sure. Just checking on you. Any man in here just fired up for no reason tonight? Nobody cares? Y'all just sitting there like you're dead? I know some of you came in and you're sitting here tonight and you're thinking, okay, I came to this thing called XL and it's usually kind of like a church but not really like a church and it's kind of this and now all we've had is a rock concert. Yeah. Welcome to the man series. That's what we do. And I'm pretty fired up about it. And here's the deal. Tonight there's some things you need to know. <clears throat> First of all, we're gonna, I'm going to, we being me, We'll say a few things during this series that are like generalizations or uh, whatever that word is, stereotypes that, that you might think, that I might say all women think this when not necessarily all women think that. You know what I'm saying? It's the man series. I may say that all men think this. For instance, we've got an entire wall full of killed animals. Some, how are you, man? You all right? Good, just checking. <clears throat> Some men in this room don't like to hunt. You don't go hunting. You don't kill animals. Other men in this room love to kill anything. Okay? So when I talk about men killing things, that doesn't mean that if you don't go kill something tomorrow, you're not a man. And if I talk about ladies thinking one thing and you think, well, that's not really me, don't go getting all offended. And, and, and if there's a point at which you think, you know, I think I'm slightly offended, just stick with us because you'll be completely offended by the time the night's over. So we are so not about making sure you go home not offended. Um, <clears throat> but another thing you need to know, it's the man series, and, <clears throat> and, and the, the funniest part of it is the fear of the women that I've been talking to about the men series. And all of the men are sitting around going, yeah, finally a series for us, and all the women are sitting at home going, oh, dang, he's going to like learn something manly, and I don't even need any part of that. But I want you to know we're not going to spend the next three weeks bashing women. We're not going to talk about what you ladies don't do and should do and to help us be better men. Um, <clears throat> yeah, one of you appreciates that. The rest of you are thinking, I don't know if I believe him yet. We'll see in just a minute what he says about women. But another thing you need to understand, we're also not going to spend three weeks bashing men. Yeah, you're the only one that cares about anything I'm saying tonight. I appreciate that. But here's the truth. A lot of you that are married tonight, you came in here tonight and you got your husband to come with you and you were thinking, oh, thank you, Jesus. Somebody finally is going to set him straight. <laughs> Who was that? I was, I was scared a man just did that. I was like, oh, what a freak. <laughs> was that Linda over there? Yeah. yeah, trust me, honey, your husband ain't getting set straight. I can tell you that right now. He's sitting back here in a recliner eating snack food while I'm talking. He ain't listening enough to get set straight. <coughs> yeah, that's exactly right. But here's the situation. I want you to hear something from me very specifically tonight. It is not anti-Christian to be a man. <laughs> My first male response of the night. I appreciate that. Thank God. It is not. And, and we have been told for years and years and years, <clears throat> if you're going to be a Christian, you can't be a manly man, which I don't even know that I know what that is, but I know a lot of people that are manly men, so I use that. Um, you can't be that kind of man because once you start going to church and once you become a Christian, you need to be sweet to people. You need to be kind to people. You need to talk nice to people. You need to be compassionate for people. And to be real honest generalization here by nature most men don't want to do that <laughs> most men do not get up in the morning and go oh I should go be sweet to somebody I wonder who I could just buy a donut for today you know 
Most men are not thinking that. But we go to church and we try and we give it our shot. And some of you guys, I understand that you were drugged here tonight because it's the man series and some young lady brought you and said, you've got to come hear this. Because they think this is their shot. Okay? <clears throat> but what you're going to hear tonight is going to change up some of the things. You, you may never get drugged here again, I can tell you that. Maybe the last drugging you ever do. Um, but what I want you to understand is in Genesis chapter 1 when God said, I have created man and it is very good. He meant that. And yes, he had created man and woman. And yes, he created both of us in, in his image. And, but yes, he created us and looked down and that was the first time he switched from it is good to it is very good. He was pleased with what he had made. And the challenge for me and the, the encouragement to you as men in this room for the next three weeks is God made you the way you are. He does not expect you to change the way you are and become something that you are not in order to live for him. Thank you very much. You're still the only one listening. He does not expect that. And I understand because I've been in church since way, way long ago, and I understand that when you go to a church, most situations are built to where they teach you as a man really shouldn't be all that manly here maybe you should be a little less manly or something and ladies you understand this because here's the stats 60 percent of people probably over 60 percent of people in church today anywhere in america are women and 25 percent of the people the women that are going to church 20 to 25 percent i think are married women whose husbands won't come. And here's the situation. You can bash on your husband until you are blue in the face. You can talk bad about him. You can tell him his mama went to church, his grandmama went to church, he should go to church. Here's the deal. He don't want to go to church. And here's why. Because when you go to church, ladies, you do everything that ladies want to do. You get to sit in a small group of other people like you and talk about life. And share your feelings. That makes men want to throw up. Okay? Thank you very much. Now we're getting into the man series. Come on, tell it. It's true. And you get to do those things. You get to hear incredible music. And you get to hear other people tell you about their feelings and their emotions. And you get to bond with people. 99.897% of men do not want any part of that most of the time. Tell it. Tell it. They don't. But we've been trying forever to reach men and to find out how to get men to fall in love with Jesus. And what I want to encourage you tonight with and tell you tonight is you can fall in love with Jesus and be the man that you're supposed to be and built to be. You can do that. You can fall in love with Jesus and still ride dirt bikes in stupid, crazy ways. You can fall in love with Jesus and on a Monday morning go down to the Yamaha shop and buy that something, something 1,000 that I want desperately. I'm going to have to fall in love with Jesus a lot to get that done. But you can do it. But here's the problem. <clears throat> Men don't like to be told what to do. Anybody there? Like half the men in the room are like, I ain't saying nothing because he's telling me to, what to do. <laughs> but they don't. And you go to church, and as a man, you are told, here is how you will live your life according to Christ. And we're having enough trouble being told how to go to work every Monday morning, how to live our lives in a way that respects everyone, how to be sweet and kind and compassionate and loving. And we as men, in general, don't like to be told what to do. I'll give you the story because um, <clears throat> I've given this story before about my wife. And here's the deal. When, Thursday is, what day is Thursday at our home, babe? Wednesday night, I have to take out the trash. Yeah. Here's what used to happen in my home. And I will say up front that it's not my wife's fault because she didn't even recognize that she did this, but I took it quite personally, <laughs> so I had to share this with her later. I would come in, I teach here on Wednesday nights, used to anyway, and I would come in about 9.30 or so on a Wednesday night, and I would shut the garage door, 
And I would walk in the home and I would shut that door and lock it and I would hear from the couch. You got you got to take out the trash. And it seriously got to a point where I, I, I honestly, and I'm telling you, it was not her, and this is just, this is me. But I'm thinking, okay, she waits until I shut the garage door, kick my shoes off, lock the door, shut it, turn the light off, sit down, hey, trash day. And it would just make me want to blow apart. Why? Because, hey, I know it's trash day. And I know I'm going to forget, and I'll probably go out there like four in the morning and put the trash out because that's just when I would do it. But you know what? That's when I would do it. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! She's shaking her head. You don't do it in either, punk. I know. <laughs> I know what my wife's thinking. But that's the case. We don't like being told what to do. And that's, I've been, I'm, a student, I'm reading a book called Why Men Hate to Go to Church. Amazing book. Because it lays it out pretty well. And I just want you to know, guys, if you were one of the, the drug here tonight ones of us, there are people in the world that understand why you don't want to go to church. We get it. And that's why we play all rock music for you tonight. That's why BJ's tearing things up. That's why my drummer's throwing sticks all over the place in the back. <clears throat> and I will say that we had... At first, we had the um, camouflage up over the drum riser, and we chose not to so you could see him. You'd rather us put that back up now? <laughs> He's like, dang, where's that camouflage when you need it, man? But the truth is, we get that. And in the next few weeks, we simply want you to understand. Yeah, we're doing Chuck Norris jokes. Why? Because Chuck Norris is the toughest man ever created by God or man. He didn't, well, Jack Bauer's running in there. Like, he's going, once he kills about 400 more people, he'll catch up to Chuck, and then we'll be right on. But we're going to show Chuck Norris jokes. We're going to talk man quotes. We got, we got man quotes written on the windows of the atrium just because we want you to know that as a man, you can come here and you can learn something, and we're not just going to tell you what you need to change about your life. We want you to be comfortable here. That's why we got the man lounge. If these guys are not even eating their pizzas, you Y'all need to go get some pizza them, and they're just kind of looking at their pizzas. We're going to have to talk about that later. What? That's why you'll never be in the man lounge. You'd already finish your pizza and be dragging that other guy. Hey, you ain't eating that. Let me some of that pizza. But I want to give you three very quick things tonight as men... Watch it, people. <laughs> you don't want to heckle the guy with the microphone. I promise. Our theme tonight, <clears throat> hunt, kill, and eat. <laughs> Steve stealing. Hunt, kill, and eat is our theme tonight. I'm sitting out on a boat dock about seven months ago, and I'm actually out there studying for some stuff and trying to get ready for some of our Excel stuff, and I watch a guy pull up at 5 o'clock in the afternoon in a boat and start fishing. And I think to myself, self, how's that brother got time to go fishing at five in the afternoon? Because I know that in our family, like at five in the afternoon, I know I had, we had to like carve out time for me to be there because at five it's like, that's the time that at four I call my wife and say, how's everything going? And she says, great, come on home. And I get home at like 5.30 and at 4.07, the Satan children came about somehow and like for the last hour and a half. So five's never like a time that I think about, oh, I think I'll go fish. But this guy's out here fishing, and I begin to think, why does he do that? What is the, why do you want to hunt things and kill things and then eat them? Hopefully you cook them first, bless you, but either way. See, men like to be in control. And I know some of you think, well, I'm not really, a yes, men are control freaks 90% of the time. Thank you very much. A lot of women are control freaks too, so don't think you're just not all, you know, it's all... Yeah. The perfect relationship is two control freaks together trying to beat each other down on who's going to drive the car. I'll leave that joke for many of you later. <clears throat> but the problem with that is that's why that control thing comes in. Because the whole hunt, kill, and eat thing, when you hunt something and you kill it and then you eat it, you are in control. 
wouldn't you think? You've just controlled that. All of these animals have been uh, what we call controlled. <laughs> now they are under our control. One of them will fall off the wall in a minute and show me that he's not. <clears throat> but here's the deal. Here's what I want you to do as a man. Number one thing I want you to do is be the man God built you to be. Be the man that God built you to be. John Mark's a doctor. Be a doctor, dude. Be the very best one you can possibly be for God. Steve Crockett's back here. Jason's back here somewhere. We got builders. Steve, I know because my house flooded one time. Two times. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you this story. This is love, my wife will love this part. Steve came and fixed our house when it flooded both times. So then when my, my wife began to have our child in our home, may know what I'm talking about? My children say, just call Steve, he can fix that. <laughs> and I say, no, honey, I don't think Steve's going to fix that. <laughs> but here's the deal. Steve is built to build things and create things. Do that for Christ. These guys up here can play like nobody's business. Some of you out there can play like that. Do that. Brent Poplin over here runs a forum downtown. If you ever need a room for anything at all, and you got like $1,000, right, Brent? You can just come to you, right? That's what God built you to do right now. And I want you to understand, Scripture says, and <clears throat> I don't mess up my pages. Luke chapter 4, verse 43 says this, but he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. I want you to understand when God built you and created you, he built you to do what you do. He built you to do what he made you good at. Because some of you are thinking, I know he didn't build me to do the job I'm doing now. He built you to do what he made you good at. And don't let people tell you, you know, in order to be a, a quality Christian, you really need to quit that job and go do something else. I don't think you do. Now, if God says that, you do that. But I want you to understand that from this stage, the number one thing you're going to hear as a man is be the man God built you to be. Because I think for way too long we've been being told, well, you're not supposed to be that kind of rough man. You're supposed to be kind of the tender-hearted, take care of people kind of deal and there's, understand, I'm not telling you not to love people. I'm telling you to love people like you're built to love people. God built you like you are. Don't let anyone tell you that that's wrong. It is not wrong to be a man. God made you that way on purpose. Yeah, we all got our issues. All the children got issues. But God built you to do what you're doing because nobody else can do it like you can do it. So what I want you to leave here encouraged with tonight is, is who you are as a man, who you are as a young lady, be that person. See, because some of you, I, I had a conversation the other day which was hilarious. Um, some of you, I, I, we talked about all the hunting stuff and we got a boat over here, we got a motorcycle, we got a chopper outside, we got four wheelers. And I had a young man tell me, none of that is anything I like to do. And after I said, okay, well, we're no longer friends. <laughs> then I began to understand, you don't have to like to hunt to hear the message tonight. The message is the man God built you to be, be that man. As well as you can possibly do it. The second thing is very clear too. Be that man with the power of God behind you. Be that man with the power of God behind you. It's interesting for us because we're control guys. We want to be the man that, that we want to be on our own. Listen to 1 Samuel chapter 17. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from the Philistine. David and Goliath. Anybody ever heard that story? David's a little guy. Goliath's an enormous dude. And basically he comes out front fighting for his army and he tells David he's going to kill him. And David says, the Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 47 says, <clears throat> after the Philistine used some incredible, you know, tell me he's going to tear him apart and kill him like a dog. 45, David replied to the Philistine, 
You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's army, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today, listen very carefully to this verse. Today, the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then it just gets into cool man stuff. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel, and everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. But the verse I pointed out right there in the minute, today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you. The number one thing David recognized before he went into battle against a giant is the Lord's the one that's going to win this thing. It ain't going to be him and his slingshot. It's going to be God. And he may be the one that kills the giant. He may be the one that cuts his head off, but he didn't win that battle. And guys, as you step up tomorrow morning and decide, I'm going to go be the man that I'm called to be, number one thing you need to recognize is if you ever get to be who God built you to be, it's because God let you. And God gave you that power. God gave you the ability to act. God gave you the ability to build. God gave you the ability to do this and this and this. God gave you all that. So allow his power to run through you and make that happen. And then the third thing is it, it, it leads to this. Understand that it all belongs to him. Because here's the deal. When you begin to be the man God called you to be and you do it according to God's power, what he leads you to understand is, hey, you know what? It's all mine anyway. He built us. He provides the power and it all belongs to him in the end. Example for us, guys. Watch the life of Jesus. Look through the life of Jesus Christ, because here's who Jesus was. In Philippians chapter 2, it talks about Jesus being God, did not consider equality with God something to grab hold of. He let that go while he was here. But Jesus had all the power. Jesus was getting all the glory because everything is made by him, for him, and through him. That's who Jesus is. And Jesus was willing, when it all came down to it, to give everything he had for his Father and for you and me. That's Jesus. And I began to look at that as I'm studying for this whole concept tonight and, and looking at, at what it means to be the man that God called us to be. We want to be in control. We want to be all-powerful. We want to be men. We want to fix everything that breaks. We want to tear apart things that we want to tear apart. And we don't want anybody questioning that because we're men. My encouragement to you, be the man God built you to be. But allow God to step in there and help you be that person. Ladies, this message is for you too. Be the woman that God has created you to be and recognize that it's his power that makes it all happen. And in the end, recognize the number one thing, it is all about him and not about you. Because truthfully, Man, if we sat around and talked to ladies and did studies and research and everything, the number one thing they're going to tell me is my husband cares about himself more than me. And I truly believe this. If you become the man God built you to be and understand that it's his power that got you there and not your own, understand that everything you own was from him and not from you, understand that every ability you have he gave you, you didn't come up with it. Understand that the ability to build, the ability to sing, the ability to play, all of those abilities came directly from him, not from you. Then it's no longer just about you. It's about him. And I want you to see that tonight. And as men, you go home encouraged with the fact that somebody somewhere finally gets the fact that you don't want to go. And there's reasons why. But I'm very, very glad that you came here tonight. Be back with us the next two weeks. Next week is a quite offensive message on shut up woman, I'm watching TV. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, if you were just slightly offended earlier, welcome home. Because I want to pray for you tonight. Then we're going to have one more song. The band's going to come rock us out before we leave tonight. But I just want to pray for you that you would simply step up and be who God built you to be. And don't let anybody tell you that's wrong. Because it's just not wrong.
Let's pray together. God, we love you and we thank you for making us who we are. I thank you for making me the man you made me. And I pray that we could all live our lives according to the plan you have for us, not the plans we come up with. Thanks for loving us, God. It's in Christ and we pray. Amen.